Let me ask you one question. Put it to your audience. Is Guadanamo a privatized concentration camp? Is it a private, privatized American base or not? <laughs> Okay. Is Guantanamo a privatized we've got, American? We've got, well, in the United we've States, okay, in the we've got Guantanamos all over Europe, in the so-called big, nice American bases. So you're for the United States military bases out of Europe and out of the, the rest of the world? How else? Aren't do they, they do they aren't they, do they bringing they, democracy to, to the world? No, they're not even paying a rent. Come on, come on. If you use if you use in the beautiful island of Crete, the the American base to go on and bomb in the Middle East or in the Balkans using Greek soil, what is this bringing democracy? Come on. Syriza's position, what was Syriza's position vis-a-vis -vis United States, uh, NATO and, and military intervention by the United States in the Middle East and Ukraine? We are in a pre-electional time and I'm not going to comment internationally other politics. They are devised, they are anti-communist, they are social democrats and they think, uh, they think that now it's the time that the Greek people should support them so that they can have a bigger coalition with an extreme right party. So what do you ask a communist if they are left enough to be with an L? Do you know what is an L? What's an L? It's a right-wing party. Okay. So they formed the government in January with a right-wing party. Who can comment on that? And they keep on calling themselves left. What kind of left? Your position, what your view about the referendum that happened in, in Turkey? It was a fake. A fake question, a fake question, a fake answer, and finally, a fake interpretation. It's a worldwide uh, new vote, extreme news. How can you have an answer no to a fake question that can be turned into a yes then you close the banks and everybody's happy. Come on. Come on. Yes. If you just go in the Greek stock market after the referendum and after all this crisis and people having seen their pensions going down, their salaries going down, their jobs being lost in seven months, go out and ask them what do they think. Now there's a mass... Hope was coming. It never came. Now there's a mass, uh, refugees are leaving uh, Syria, they're leaving other countries and coming to uh, Greece and many other countries. What is the cause of the mass migration and uh, of refugees in Imperialism, Europe? imperialism. We are the civilized Western world producing refugees. There are people making money out of these refugees. They create new energy. Big, 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 big pipelines, and they throw out people of their lands, their houses, their culture, and everything. They invade. Exporting democracy means creating refugees all over the world. Nobody has a need to leave his country, and uh, people were not left to solve the problems their own way, with their own choices, and their own prices that they wanted to pay for that. We teach them how to face hell. And then we return back as angels trying to take them out of hell. We create hell and then we play the angels. And it's very profitable. You make money out of this. You make money out of this. And when you're talking about privatization, look at the American troops in Iraq. Who's talking about country, ideals, or anything? Everybody says, I'm doing my job. So they're doing their job, and they have private security companies to keep up the troops so that they are secured enough to kill women and children. 
to understand progress, I, I cry out loud to every worker all over the world. We had two world wars. Now we are going straight for a third big one, big one, a globalized war. Because if you have wars here, wars there, wars there, you already are in the middle of a third world war. Try to understand what's happening in the first world war. The victims were 90% soldiers, troops, and 10% women and children, okay? In this modern world, and in these modern wars, we have 95% women, children, and non-uniformed populations killed instead of 5% very well equipped, very well educated, very well bestialized troops all over the world. Come on, this is the case. If you call this civilization, take it. I won't take it. Now, I won't take it as progress. I won't take it as progress. Now, if your party is elected to power in Greece, what would your program be? What would you do to solve the social economic conditions of the Greek working class Greek people? People ruling, you just have to take the pyramid of power and not use it as they do. From the peak to the base, you have to turn it all over. The base has to decide what's happening. And how would that happen? You've seen it happening in societies that were behind the sun and they became societies. You have an experiment. We can speak about the failures, we can speak about everything. Like it is happening in, um, I'll give you an example. When a hurricane hits Cuba and the hurricane hits New Orleans, count the dead, and then you'll decide what system is the best. When a hurricane hits Cuba, the system has one or two dead out of bad luck or old people or people that they didn't have the time to run away. They evacuate them, they bring them back to their houses. In New Orleans, what happened? How many dead? How many people came back to their houses? How many people have to pay because a hurricane struck their lives? And where is the culture of New Orleans now? Do you think Greece by itself would be able to solve its economic and social problems without a revolution uh, uh, in Europe and the rest of the world? What do you mean by itself? In other words, if you're part- We are left alone anyhow. The working class all over the world is left alone and deprived of everything. What, what this, this psychoanalytic approach of the, of the people's interest is something that makes me mad. We're not in a bed talking about our problems. We're out in the offices, in the factories, in the fields, in, 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 the, in the universities, in the schools. Everybody is trying hardly. What do you mean? Loneliness, loneliness has become the, the alibi of the bosses. You need the boss to protect you. You need a boss to protect you. So if you don't have a boss, then you're alone. No, I don't need a boss. So, I can live alone. So what action would you call With for? With other co-workers all over the world. You would, you, would support, you would call for action of other workers in Europe yeah, and, yes, and the United States. I can States have enough Russia. food even being able to export it, okay? And I don't need you to tell me what kind of food do I need. And if I need uh, corn like this and corn like that. So, I can produce my own fertilizers. I don't need the boss of Monsanto or the big international companies selling seeds. No. I don't need to pay fees for having a seed being planted. Now I have to pay. You don't like I, Monsanto? No, no, no. I don't <laughs> like anyone, anyone that puts a rent in my life. They put a rent in my life. I have to pay a rent to them because they exist and I have to work for the rest of my life so that they can exist. Now, right now... The working class can live without bosses. The working class has to be the ruler and the boss of itself. Okay, um, in the Russian Revolution, 
there were Soviets set up in the in the Paris Commune. The work, the people of Paris had a commune and reorganized society. How do you see today in the, in the world of economy today workers taking control of their uh, lives and of society? As the best historical uh, chance and lesson ever can teach you only to avoid mistakes done. Going back to the anti-revolutionary uh, uh, deviation of the working class. Communists did not end from outside only, but even for inside. Were the Americans very rich when they invaded Korea to start communism? Were the Americans very rich to finance Ben London? Were the Americans and the Europeans very rich to invade Iraq and bomb it? And you sit back in your television with a Coke or a pizza, just watching the bombs going down and facing the shock of a modern Hiroshima and a modern Nagasaki. Why do you think the American working class is not more political active against U.S. military intervention around the world, against the economic policies of the United States? Manipulation in media. So they don't have a different point of view? M-M, double M. <laughs> so you think they're being propagandized and lied to? No, I think it starts media. from the educational system, it starts from the Constitution, it starts from the right of um, not being able to understand what's really happening in the world. Because they have the illusion, because of the Internet, of having all the sources. And, you know, alternative media, it's the labor movement, the unions around the world. When you have priests working on television in the States, then you have uh, churches created on the air, for the air, by the air, through the air, producing air. In the United States, there is no mass labor party, no mass workers party, no mass communist party. You have the Democrats and Republicans, mm -hmm. which both, both represent big business, multinationals. What do you think the American working class should do to defend itself and to solidarize with the Greek and working class around the world? Work, work, work. They have to realize that their work is the biggest, the most valuable capital in the world. And then consider what is a lifetime. What is a lifetime? So how do you divide your time? How do you divide your time? Why are people born in a different way? Come on. If your business is to have a funeral business, if you have a funeral business, okay, what is the wish when I come to your first day in office? Do I wish you honestly? I hope you have lots of businesses. That means lots of dead. Come on. Capitalism is the worldwide funeral of the working class. Do you, if you, you don't, if you don't overthrow capitalism, then you will not talk about life. You will talk about renting your life to somebody who's gonna put you classes in the way you're going to your grave. You want a luxury funeral, a mediocre funeral, a humble funeral? It's, a, it's a, all about price. At the end, what is the size of land? You need, I need, and a big capitalist needs. Two to one. So what should the American workers do who want to support the struggle of the Greek working class against stop, austerity, against stop, privatization? Stop, stop being informed by all the anti-communist sources in the world. Stop seeing communists as invaders in their lives. Because the youth of the world is called communism. 
Are you optimistic that the working class in Greece and the working class around the world will be able to overcome not just the uh, economic crisis, but the environmental crisis? There's so many crises facing the world working class, the people of the world. Uh, I'm, not rich, I'm not rich enough to buy a new house in Mars, in Aphrodite, or in another planet. So I am condemned to be communist and be optimistic because I don't want to live alone. I live with others. If I was living alone, then I would have enough money to buy a new house in another planet. So I'm, I'm not living an imaginary life. I'm living a true life like you, like everybody else. All together, we can change it. We can change it. We can be ruling our lives. But you have to decide that and not being a star. Not being what? Not being a star. A star? No, no, no. Because everybody wants to be a leader. So if the working class is a leader, they don't need stars to lead them. They are the stars of their lives. Capitalism is selling leaders that you can follow. So you can be optimist as far as they are optimist. They can drive you to hell and be very happy because you're following them. If the working class is going to rule the world, then you know you don't need stars anymore. And how is young people in Greece using social media, using communication technology to get their stories out with anger. about their struggle? For the time being with anger. And anger doesn't make always clear minds. Anger, desperation, uh, fake hoops, and um, depending their lives to the decision of others. What do you see labor or working people having their own alternative media uh, and communication technology to expose their struggle and educate and organize? A nice idea, unless somebody had this idea, like it happens with lots of NGOs all over the world, that they are undergroundly used to help the bosses. If you can guarantee to me that you're not going to work for any other boss than the working class, that's okay. But if they can, can manipulate it and um, take advantage of a channel like this, then you will end up being the Bill Gates of the working class. Well, talk about the NGOs and Bill Gates, how they manipulate uh, people around the world. Come on, darling, if I'm sick and I go to the hospital, I need a good doctor and a good nurse. I don't need an NGO providing me uh, a, a nurse for the night because I don't have enough money to pay it. So when you see NGOs, button yourself because most of the times, not all of them, no, I will not generalize, they are used to do the dirty job that the official governments cannot do. You see that as a way of nonprofits to outsourcing? They take advantage sometimes of the good heart people, of the solidarity people show, of their good intentions, of, of, of the time they want to spare, so that they can cover the holes, the official politics, leave. So if I don't have enough uh, well-educated, not brutal policemen to take care of the, of the calmness in a society, then I use NGOs that they can turn out into Nazis trying to protect me. Do you see a danger of the rise of neo-Nazis and fascism? It is in happening. And it is happening. How is it happening? It is happening. How? Uh, um, hidden or outblown all over Europe. Just see what parties are promising to clean up the mess. When you listen and you hear saviors coming, Nazis are coming. You think Donald Trump is a fascist type in the United States? He's a very useful tool of all the conservative powers of the world. Why is that? Because they decided they are the best. And they are trying to convince people to secure this by voting them, by voting for them. I saw Obama being a Democrat, 
safe, he's going to shut down Guantanamo, he's going to do this, do that, do that, do that. What did she do? Come on. The American Communist Party supported Obama and previous Democrats. Never existed to the size to the size that it could. You don't believe as a matter of principle that you should support Democrats. Is that what you're saying? No. Come on. Why not? You don't support two of the bosses sharing historically the power. I'm proposing you be the boss. So you don't think there's a good boss? No. No. What is a good boss? Do you truly want to tell me in the 21st century that there are people born to be bosses and people born to be slaves? Come on. Lenin was saying something that's very successful. When you get rid of the monkey you have on your shoulder, don't be sure that the circus left. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good. You gotta come to San Francisco. Yes. Sir.